Hello, this is Ciro Pirone from Rise and Beverage, and this is a, another edition of Vineyard VIP. Uh, we have a wonderful pleasure today to have here in Massachusetts in our house at Rise and Beverage a great friend, uh, Andrea Cecchi. Andrea, benvenuto. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Buongiorno a te. And uh, Andrea represents uh, several generations, of one of the pioneers and historical families of the Chianti area. So we wanted to ask you a couple of questions, take advantage of this great of opportunity and moment. Uh, and thank you for coming back to Boston as well. And uh, the first question I wanted to ask, because in 2016, the Chianti celebrated 300th anniversary. So a great accomplishment for, for the area, for the Appalachians, for the history that that represents. Presents. And the question that I had was uh, just that was a quick story, uh, an anecdote, something that uh, uh, to our people watching us here in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, means something relevant for the Chianti. Well, we are very proud uh, of uh, this anniversary. The uh, Editto di Cosimo Terzo dei Medici uh, mentioned uh, 300 years ago that uh, the area of production of Chianti was. Uh, with that fence, with that uh, uh, boundary. Exactly. And so inside of Tuscany, between Florence and Siena, we could produce this wine. And so this is one of the most ancient appellations of the world. And uh, also the grapes that they were using uh, are the same that uh, the grapes that we use now. So we are proud because we have an historical background which is very deep but we have the same, I would say, method, the same grapes that we used 300 years ago. It's amazing. Now we do know Italy actually owns the oldest Appalachian in the world. So that's quite amazing. So um, I know there's been a lot of things happening at the winery, a lot of new, uh, I guess the newest property is in the Maremma, where yeah. a lot of things are heating up and they're moving and shaking. And um, I would love to know what you guys have been doing there. What makes Maremma a bit unique in few words for people watching us that might not be as familiar? And what's going on? Well, as you know, Chiro, Tuscany is in the middle of a country, so it's uh, exactly in the middle uh, of uh, Italy and uh, has a perfect climate of, uh, uh, to produce wine. And uh, from all the region, is very much vocated to, to the production of wine. But my family was a pioneer in a few different areas of production. I represent the fourth generation of my family in the business, uh, together with my brother Cesare. And uh, so my father, before to pass away, he decided to buy a couple of new estates. And one is in Maremma, which is in the south part of the Tuscan region, uh, on the coast, on the Mediterranean Sea where we have a different climate comparing what we have in a Chianti Classico, even if we have only 80 miles away from the two different areas. So the Maremma is warmer, is windy, is a, is a place where the Vermentino and the Sangiovese or the other grapes, they can be very ripe soon. And it means that uh, we can have a more fruity red wines and very crisp white wines produced with Vermentino, which is very much planted on the coast. So you may know that the Vermentino is planted in Sardinia, Liguria, and of course in Toscana, but just on the coast, because can keep the freshness sure. and the acidity also when it's very ripe. That's great. So basically Maremma, coastline, warmer Mediterranean, and then Chianti, more inland, cooler climate and exactly. whatnot. So yeah. that's fantastic. And lastly, um, we have this uh, wine called Riserva di Famiglia that we sell here in the market in Boston. I'm sure it's an extremely historical wine for for you guys and for the Cecchi family. Um, if you want to tell us just a few words about specifically this wine and how it is different and what's its uniqueness um, and also a little bit about the history. When did it start and uh, exactly. uh, why, why the name Riserva di Famiglia? Okay, we started to produce this wine <clears throat> in 1987. The first vintage of Reserva di Familia was 87. And uh, it started by a project starting from a vineyard. So we produced this wine with two different vineyards that we have in our estate in Castellina and Chianti. Okay. And uh, over there we have one vineyard where we have Sangiovese, which represents 90% in this blend. And then we have another vineyard, La Gavina, which is an historical vineyard planted at Cabernet Sauvignon, so, which represented 10%. So since the beginning, this wine was produced with the same grapes, with the same uh, uh, varietals coming from the same, uh, of course, uh, vineyards. And it's very interesting for us because we can keep 
the style of the wine, vintage by vintage, of course, even if the uh, vintage are different and that makes a difference, of course, uh, in a style, in a, in a taste, in a structure, but it's what we love because the weather is something that gives us the chance to produce different style of life of, uh, of wine. And year. what should we drink this with, most importantly? Well, we love this wine with some uh, meat, cheese, meat and cheese. Meat and cheese. Well, meat, Boston uh, loves meat and cheese too. Uh, una bistecca alla Fiorentina. Eh, ma classico. Or, or uh, uh. E even some pasta dishes, for instance, uh, uh, with some tomato sauce, uh, some little bit spicy. Great. But I think that this wine can be also nice, not only with Italian food, because uh, but often we we have the match the wine with Italian food, but I think that we may have also with some other type of food that can be spicy and rich in a taste. Great. Well, thank you so much for um, giving us insights about what you guys are doing, the family, the wines, most importantly. We welcome you to Boston next time. I'd love to thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Ciro. Salute. And thank you to Ryzen. And grazie. Thank you. And uh, till next time.